they are in charge, they need to, there will be high rate of employment opportunities. Also, development of private initiatives. It won't be that the foreigners will be the one that will be bringing their own initiatives. It will help the indigenous to also think of how to develop themselves and how to bring out a good development in the country. And lastly, it increases the standard of living of such country. Those are the advantages of indigenization. It is not, indigenization is not with its own challenges and disadvantages. Then the following are the disadvantages of indigenization. One, discouragement of foreign investment. When you take over the for, I mean the industry from the foreigners, you are indirectly discouraging foreign investment. And foreign investment is one of the major factors of an economic growth. When you allow some foreigner to come and invest in your country, it will bring out bring up development in the country. That's one of the disadvantages. Two, it can lead to disharmony between countries, between the uh, the country and the foreign countries. It will, it can lead to disharmony whereby there will be disagreement between the countries. Three, it can lead to capital flight. That is, foreign investors will relocate to their own country or to a better country where they will be accepted and accommodated. Therefore, they will relocate and go with their own capital, which can have a kind of negative effect on the economy. Four, inexperience and incompetence can destroy business. Some of the West African countries are not competent enough or are not experienced in the production of some product. By handing over the ownership and management of industries into their hands may lead to the destroy of such countries, I mean of such business, and it will have an adverse effect on the economy. And five, the rich people in such economy, such environment, such country can hijack the economy because they have the, 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 the monetary power to control and to dominate in the economy. Therefore, they will be exploiting the masses and they will be inconveniencing the less privileged. Those are the disadvantages of indigenization. Nationalism. Nationalism is a deliberate policy by which government takes over the control and ownership of private enterprises due to economical or political or strategic reason. It is different from indigenization Indigenization is the taking over from foreigners into the hands of the indigenous. But nationalism is the taking over by the government, not the indigenous in this case, but the government to be the one in charge. Therefore, it is a process by which the government takes over the ownership and management of industries for private control, from private control by bringing it under its exclusive control. That is, it will be the only one that will, the government will be the one in charge of such industry. They will take over the control and the management of such industry. Why nationalism? Why? What are the reasons for nationalism? One, for strategic reasons like security, like defense, or politics. When we call, the government discovered that such industries, if it's not taken over and being controlled by governments, can bring an insecurity to a country, it can cause problems for a country, government tends to do what? To hijack such uh, industry from the hands of the private ownership. Two, to prevent exploitation. Any industry at the hands of the private individual tends to exploit the masses, but in the hands of the government, there is need or uh, the, the rate of uh, 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 exploitation will be very low. Therefore, in order to prevent exploitation, government can take it over. Three, to avoid foreign dominance of the economy. In order to avoid much more of foreign investors in an economy, government can decide to take over some industries. Also, there is, if there is need for large capital to sustain such industry, and government, in most cases, are the only one that can provide such huge uh, capital to run those, I mean, those uh, industries. Also, to prevent wasteful competition, there may be some 
harmful competition between the industry and the economy, and the competition will only be affecting the masses. In order to prevent this, government can take over such uh, industry. And lastly, to provide uninterrupted service. To provide uninterrupted service to make the services and goods available for the masses at the right time and the right uh, quantity. What are the advantages of nationalism? It helps to check exploitation. Two, it ensures steady supply of essential goods, especially those goods and services that are needed on everyday uh, activities by the masses, for the masses. Three, elimination of waste. To eliminate waste, much more of waste is not good for an economy. Also, it encourages efficient use of resources and also to protect the for the protection of strategic industries. Some industries that are so important to the economy, in order to protect them from any harm, the government can take it over. And also to ensure equitable distribution of resources so that the masses will not be suffering while the, 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 the rich and the privileged one will be uh, inconveniencing the masses with their own huge resources with their own huge monetary power and other uh, power then to eliminate monopoly. Monopoly is its form of dominating and being the only person uh, providing such. In order to eliminate such, government can take it over so that the economy will not be in the hands of anyone. Then what are the disadvantages of nationalism? One, profession of private initiatives. It doesn't encourage private initiatives. Anybody that has any initiative to bring out any industry or production in an economy, such uh, policy, nationalism, doesn't encourage them. Two, low productivity and inefficiency. Low productivity and inefficiency in the sense that once those industries are in the hands of the government, people will not commit themselves to work actively and to work efficiently they will believe it's for government and it worth nothing to sweat on. Therefore, it will lead to low productivity. Three, corruption and mismanagement. People will start being corrupt and mismanaging the affairs of the industry because it is not theirs and it belongs to it belongs, it belongs to the government. And the last one is allocation of resources. Some resources that are needed most in some areas do not get there because some people as government agents may not be uh, uh, active enough to do their work effectively. Those are the disadvantages of nationalism. And we also have commercialization and privatization. Commercialization is a policy geared towards making state-owned enterprise to become more efficient and more profit-oriented. Initially and originally, Public, I mean, public enterprise, state-owned enterprise, is not mainly for profit making, but for the welfareism in most cases of the country. But when government of a particular country try to uh, uh, make state-owned enterprise to become more efficient and more profit-oriented, then it's becoming commercialization. The policy make it possible for public enterprise to become more viable and more effective once they are targeting profit. Then, privatization, on the other hand, is a policy designed to enable individuals or private or corporate organization to take over the ownership and control of government businesses, such as public companies and public corporations. That is, when an individual is being invited into the taking over and control of government businesses to buy it over, then such policy is what we refer to as privatization. What are now the reasons for commercialization and privatization? What are the reasons that can make government to want to make its business that is supposed to be controlled and majorly for the welfare of the, of, the, of the masses to be in the hands of the uh, private ownership? One, for efficient management, because they know that anybody that is into business on a private, uh, I mean the private business, tends to manage it very well because 
the, pro, the, the major target is to make profit. In that case, for efficient management, government can decide to lead, I mean, let uh, the private ownership uh, take over the uh, corporation and the business. Two, participation of private individual. Government may want to encourage individuals to participate in the production and provision of some services into uh, in an economy. Therefore, that's another reason. Also to generate more revenue. By selling it out, government will gain more revenue. And at the same time, the private ownership will also be, will still continue providing the services for the masses. Four, autonomy of enterprise. Four, to allow individuals to have the autonomy, to have power over some, uh, uh, some businesses and be on their own is another reason for commercialization. And lastly, to remove unproductive enterprise. When government discovers that an industry is not really producing very well, is not meeting the required uh, 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 output, then they can give it out to private individuals that will be able to manage it well and bring out a good level of productivity. Those are the reasons for commercialization and privatization. Then it has some advantages. One, reduction in public expenditure. Because government is not the one taking charge and controlling it again, then there will be reduction of uh, public funds on such uh, industry and such uh, uh, business. Two, it promotes efficiency. Any private owned business tends to be much more efficient than public owned. Therefore, it promotes efficiency in production. Three, generation of more revenue. It gives more revenue to the government. Also, emergence of innovation. It will help the private ownership 